Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to make these really cute hearts. Uh, so I have this idea to make a larger heart, a smaller heart, and then kind of a, a triangular shaped heart in a row and have them all hanging one from the other. And I was thinking about using dichroic on this, which I love dichroic, you know that. And then I thought to myself, you know, I have a whole bunch of fun material in the studio. I'm just going to kind of do a patchwork of different materials on this glass, completely cover it with some fun things I have here in the studio. I have Murini here, and Murini are rods with a really cool pattern inside that when you cut it into little pieces like this and work them, you know, uh, place them upright, you see that really cool pattern inside. And they're a lot of fun to work with. I also have some twisted cane. Here, look at all these beautiful pieces. These are so fun. They give a three-dimensional quality to your art. So I thought I would work some of that in. I have this fun tube of these wavy fire strips. And I have some pieces that are broken in that tube. I took them out and I got them right here. And I'm gonna work some of those into this piece. Because, you know, you could always find a use for the long ones, but can you find a use for these small ones? Well, today we're going to. I also have some strips of dichroic up here. I'm going to work into this. And I have these, this, oh, oh, oh boy, watch out. I have this pretty pink glass with pink and white wispy. I thought I might use that. I just happen to like that blue and green. And then I've got a couple of pattern dichroic here. That one, that These one. These all scraps you had? These are all scraps I had, yeah. I'm just kind of pulling here. Now this is super fun. These are Technicolor pinwheels. And they're uh, clear, fusible glass with a dichroic pattern that looks like a pinwheel. And there's all these different fun designs. So dichroic tend to show best on a dark color. So what I'd like to do, I have three different sizes here. I have large, medium, and small pinwheels here. Look how fun these are. So what I would like to do, in order to make these show really nicely, they show better on a dark color. So I went ahead and cut three different circles. One for a large, one for a medium, one for a small. And kind of a dark blue, medium blue, and a lighter blue. I'm going to put these on the blue, on top of the heart. So we get a pattern as well as other things going on. Then. I have this fun piece of mini splatter, which is just spectacular. It's got dichroic coating on both sides, and it's very lacy looking and really fun. So we're gonna work that in somehow. And what else do I have here? I have two little stars. I may or may not use those, haven't decided yet. And I have a big bucket of scrap dichroic. We might be kind of working some of that in and playing with some of that material. So, let's get started. I'm using this white glue because uh, I'm going to work with a bunch of little pieces on this. And so I want to make sure that once I decide where something's going to go, it doesn't move around on me. So I have a little scrap piece of glass with some glue on it and a toothpick. I'm going to apply the glue with the toothpick. So I'm going to take this big piece of glue, put a couple dots on there, just place it down. Just put some on this one, put it over here, something like that. And this one I'm gonna put on this one. I'm just gonna hang like that. I wanna do it over here. So I kind of have a visually a zigzag pattern going on there. Then I'm gonna take some of these pinwheels. I'm gonna open them up and here it is. All right, when you open these, you wanna be really careful to um, don't just try to bend the cardboard and, and take them out. You wanna use some sort of razor blade or X-Acto knife I'm trying to turn this so you can see what I'm doing. Um, to get those out so that you don't put any strain on that glass and risk breaking it. So this is a large one. Ooh, isn't that fun? Now here, the coating is up. If I turn it this way, the coating's down. Let's do the coating down on that one. I'm not going to use any glue on that because it will um, show up through that coating, and I don't want to do that. I want it to be spectacularly beautiful. All right, now I'm going to take... Uh, I really like this one here. This is the medium one. 
And this one has a fun kind of almost like a firecracker or spiral or a nautilus shell or something. I think that's really fun. I put it behind this dark glass so you can see it. Isn't that cool? It's like a centipede. Okay, well, well that's what we'll call it then. I'll put that one there. Rotate it a little bit. And so that's the small, and the large and medium. Now let's do a small one on here. Let's see. Nikki, you want to pick one out? Hmm. That one. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty, like a little flower. All right, now these dichroic pieces are, um, they're on thin, clear to milk. So they're a little bit fragile. So you want to be careful not to strain that glass and potentially break it. All right, so isn't that fun? Okay, so now let's see. I think I'll take uh, some this dichroic here. Oh, it's coming along nicely, huh? All right, let's, what are we gonna do? Well, hmm. All right, I'm gonna take this glass and I'm gonna nip it into squares. There we go. Now these are mosaic nippers, so you can use those to cut glass and get your random sizes. And I'm gonna go ahead and make like a little border. Where's my thing? I'm gonna use this nice pretty purple one right here. Make a little border. All right, so I'm gonna continue working my way around with this little border. I think this would go better this way. Yes. And this one's gonna go better this way. Oh, I like that, the way that's working. Now I'm gonna take some bigger pieces. Let's take this piece of fun dichroic here. I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna cut it over here. So I recently organized my scrap and now I feel a lot more um, inclined to use it because it's easier to get to. I now have a nice idea of what is my my inventory is, that's kind of silly to inventory your scrap, but it's kind of nice once you know how much you have, then you're more inclined to use it. I've checked out this technique there, whoop, boom. That's a little trick I learned when I had to make dozens of these little hearts. Just kind of snap the glass. Ooh, I like that. All right, now, when you use glass in one area of a piece of art, you want to use that glass, you want to repeat it elsewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this one over here like that. I like that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna move it over here. Oh, actually, if I do that, it fits beautifully. I'll just go ahead and glue that down. There, okay. Now, let's see, I've got this fun edge here. We definitely wanna work that in somehow. So let's, and we've got a nice straight edge here. Let's move that over a little bit. And let's use it there. All right, now I could take my Sharpie, which I happen to have right here, and I could mark this. And that's kind of where I want to cut it. Now this thicker edge doesn't want to cut really well, so I'm just going to kind of abbreviate it. Or I could have used the mosaic nippers. But I'm hoping I have enough control with the cutter that I get what I want. And it didn't quite break where I wanted, but that's all right. We're going to use it anyway. All right, what's happening here? The pieces are sticking to me because they have, the glue is on top. There we go. All right, we're going to have to re-glue that. We need more glue. Now, when you do glue, use the smallest amount possible so that it burns off without leaving any residue. And I do not glue the dichroic down unless it's dichroic on black. And the reason for that is because it leaves a halo behind on the back side of the glass that I don't care for. It kind of disrupts the, the coloring. All right, let's see how this looks. Well, I think it looks fine. All right, that's dichroic, so we're not going to glue. I'm just going to let it sit there. There we go. All right, now let's try what else we have here that we wanted to work with. Uh, some of these little zigzag pieces. Sure, let's go ahead and stick one of those in there. All right, we'll take that out. This zigzag, does it fit in here? Yeah, it fits beautifully in there. Now this is dichroic on black, so I can glue that. And put that right there. Fun stuff, okay. All right, we're gonna just put a piece of dichroic here. Love that. Rotate that over, yes, we love that. Let's see, we turn it this way. Okay, we're gonna do it this way. Actually, this one will do dichroic coating up. Ooh, and look, that little curvature fits beautifully right there. 
okay, it didn't quite break exactly where I wanted, so I'll go ahead and peel that off my pliers. All right, that's gonna go there. All right, now we're gonna take some of these little Murini. Ooh, we forgot the twisted cane. Let's use some of that. Oh, I like this green. I like that green a lot. Okay, we'll take the mosaic peppers, trim that, put that there. Very nice, we're gonna go ahead and glue that. And now I'm gonna take some Urini, go ahead and do a row of that. Of that. Let's alternate blue, because Nikki loves blue. All right. I'm starting to feel like I'm all thumbs. And this is why I happen to have my tweezers handy today. Look at that. Blue, there's a dark blue. That in there. And then we want the light blue. Oh, now we need a dark blue. Here's a dark one. Oh, let's see. Here we go. Look how fun that is. Ooh, and now let's just cut a piece of glass to fit there. Let me grab a piece. Ooh, maybe we'll use a piece of dichroic. How about that? Yeah, that's fun, right? All right, so if we go this way, I'm just gonna eyeball this. Yes. All right, nothing here is really precise, but that's all right. I like that a lot. And now if you take dichroic, some clear glass, put on top of that dichroic, you get another cool effect. So should we do that? Yes, we should. Let me find a piece of clear. Well, let's see, I happen to have a gigantic bin of clear over here. And this one happens to be iridized. So that's cool, let's use that. So we'll make sure the iridized coating is up. I'll just cut a little strip. And I'll put that on top for fun. Ooh, look how cool this is. All right, now let's see, is this one the coating up or down? Let's see. Uh, coating is down. Good. So if the coating's down, we can put other things on top of it. Oh, nope. The coating's going to be up. Okay, so we don't want to put things on top of it. I'm just going to let that kind of ride. All right, let's go ahead and um, do a little more detail over here. Got a pretty good mess going here, but I'm having fun. So that's what it's all about. This one, I have a little bit of everything. I have some dichroic. Um wavy piece here, some dichroic strips here, the pattern pieces, got some Urini, some twisted cane, this pretty glass around the perimeter, got some Urini in a row here, I think that's fun, a little uh, zigzag piece there. This one right here, uh, got a little bit of everything there, got dichroic, we have some Urini, some twisted cane. I'm thinking about putting this piece on top for fun. And then over here, I have this little area right here that I need to fill in, and I don't have any twisted cane on this one yet. So I'm thinking about putting that one right there, like that. And maybe um, a little piece of yellow right here. I like that. Tuck that in there. And then something along the edge. Maybe I will use a cut piece of glass because, yeah, I think we'll take that one. We'll put this green one there. A cut piece of glass will hold that twisted cane, keep it from rolling away. Oh, there it goes, rolling away. Rolling away, rolling away. That's all right. All right, let's take this piece and cut it like there. Notice how precise this cutting is right here. Sometimes it's fun just to build things in an organic way that makes it more fun. All right, well, I got everything moving around here. Let's try to get this twisted cane back on there. I'm gonna cut it a little shorter. There we go, put that on, oops, hello. There we go. And my Murini fell off, so I'm gonna take these tweezers and put that back on there. Oh gosh. I guess it's just gonna fit two. There we are, and this little piece kind of fits nicely up here. I'm gonna cut that off a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, so 
So we have Twisted Cane on all of them. We have Urini on all three. We have Dacroic on all three. We have a pattern uh, on these two. We've got a, don't really have a pattern on this one. Maybe we need a little pattern on there. Or maybe we take this off and instead we put this on. That's fun, like a little lightning bolt. Yeah, I like that. Okay, now the tricky part is I was thinking about using these handy hangers for these projects. But in order to use them, I have to tuck them in between the, piece, between the layers of glass. So one option would be to assemble this on top, put another piece of glass underneath, build it up a little bit, or move some of these pieces and put it underneath. Ooh, either way, it's gonna be a pain and gonna be a pain. But these are great little uh, hangers, so I definitely wanna use them. And uh, so I think what we'll do is we'll take a little bit, we'll take a moment here to uh, get these tucked in between those layers. And actually we might wanna do this on top of the kiln shelf so I don't have to move it again. So let's go ahead and bring that in. All right, so I have this kiln shelf here. And rather than disassemble these, what I'm going to do is put another piece of glass behind and build the project up on a piece of glass and sandwich the handy hanger between this glass and this assembled project. So I think that should work. So let's see, we'll put this one right here. Look at that. And we're just gonna pick up this whole thing. And some of this is not glued, that's okay. I'll bring it over here and put it right on top of that. And then we have an added detail on the back. Isn't that cool? So let's add that twisted cane in there. I think this is gonna work out pretty well. And this material is iridized clear. So that makes it even more fun. Let's take this, uh, let's see, that was a large hanger. Oh, and you know what? Guess what? We need a hanger off the bottom as well. Boy, am I glad I remembered that now. So let's do it this way. True that tri diagonally. Hang this here. Oh boy, aren't we so happy that we've remembered that now? Because uh, how am I gonna hang something from the bottom if I don't have a hook? All right, oop, well, we're losing some stuff here. All right, there we go. Look, oh, that's gonna work out beautifully. All right, take these little guys, put them back on there. Where'd this one go? Here it is. Yeah, that's gonna work out beautifully. Now that one has iridized glass. I don't have any more of that. So what we're gonna do is I'll just cut this piece of clear. Well, let's see if this one's long enough for that one. It is. Okay, we'll put that down. We're gonna put a hanger on the top, a hanger on the bottom. There we go. And then we'll put, place this little heart shape on top. Some of these pieces are gonna move on me. Oop, yeah, there they go. And look, that <laughs> is working out beautifully. I didn't even measure these pieces. I love it. All right, I lost to this one right here. I'm gonna get my tweezers because this thing is uh, definitely wanting to move. So let's do, the, do this in the most uh, easiest way we can to get the results that we want. There we go. Okay, now I don't have any more iridized for this one, but I only need a hanger in one spot. So how about let me, uh, we'll just use a piece of clear. Yeah, we'll just run one the length of it here. I'll put that here. I'll put a little hook right here. Well, uh, I'm gonna take these to a full fuse temperature so everything should melt down and this should work really nicely. And I'll take this one over here, put it on top. Uh, the clear sticks out a little bit here. I think that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about that. What I don't care for though is my hook is no longer straight. And I really would like that straight. So there we are. Okay, there we go. Put, oh, put this back on. All right, let's see about the, getting this hook straight. There we go. Well, that is fun. So I've got my pretty little curly cute, my little designs. We have our little zigzag piece here. I didn't manage to, one more little piece I really wanted to fit in here. Where did it go? It was a little piece of 
patterns I crook. Maybe I did use it. Maybe I did work it in. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, it's looking fun. I like that there's a lot of transparency. The transparency will show beautifully when it, the light goes behind it. I got some triangular shapes here that maybe I should fill in. So let's go ahead and put a couple of little pieces in there. I've got uh, like this little dichroic piece. If I cut this in half, this little triangle, I think that'll fit in there nicely. Let's try it right here. Yep. Try one right here. Yes, beautiful. All right, I've got a little space there. Let's go ahead and tuck something in there. Maybe this little piece right here will work in that one. Oops, yep, but it's going to need the tweezers. So let's go ahead and get that in there. Take the tweezers, tuck this in here. Okay, it doesn't want to fit in that spot. So fine, I'll move it over here. <laughs> it just doesn't want to um, cooperate at all. There, okay, fits beautifully there, so that's where it's staying. And let's see if we have some more little triangles here. This one, I can work into a little spot. Now, I'm kind of like, instead of putting frit in here to create a, you know, fill in the background, I'm using little pieces of glass. And I think it's gonna give it a really pretty look. Because now I've got that dichroic kind of working its way around the perimeter, and I think that adds a nice extra detail here. Let me go ahead and cut a little triangle off of here. And this is when I get kind of, you know, like ridiculous, like, oh my gosh, is this extra, extra attention detail really worth it? And a lot of times, at this point, I'm sort of ready to move it into the kiln, but I'm having a good time. And I'm now that I'm putting a little time and effort into this kind of finishing touch, I like the way it's working out and the way it's adding extra detail to the artwork. I could also, and now I'm going to start wanting to do that everywhere. Gosh, we could tuck this little piece in here. Oh, look at that, fits nicely on its side. Let's see if we can get it to lay down in there. No. All right, so that one's not going to work. Uh, oh, I really like the way that, that turned out. All right, I think uh, this is the little piece that I wanted to fit in. I guess I already did. Look at that pretty little pattern going on there. I thought that was so cute. And I have that pattern in this piece, so... You know, when I work on a piece of art, if I use a pattern, color, design in one place, I like to repeat it elsewhere, which is what I'm doing there. And I'm going to repeat this here. Tuck that up there. All right, let's move this to the kiln before I do any else, anything else to it. We made it to the kiln fine. Nothing moved, so that was great. We're going to close this up, fire to a full fuse temperature, and then we'll come back and see what we have. Welcome back to the studio. We fired this kiln overnight. Let's open it up and see what we have. All right. Ooh, check it out. I'm loving the way these came out. We've got three hearts. This one's kind of an elongated one. Got some dichroic pieces, a nice pattern going on there, lots of color. So let's go ahead and take this one out. Got a little bit of a variation here in the edge quality. That's fine. It's because that one piece didn't fit quite right and it was a little bit overlapped. I thought, but it's kind of fun, right? These are the Murini here. Got the patterned pinwheels here. Look how much uh, stronger the color is on this pinwheel than this one because it's on a darker color. Something else that's interesting is the pinwheel was on a square piece of clear. And see how that you have a square shape here? That's because the clear dilutes the color in the background and so we kind of have a circular shape, a square shape, and a circular shape. So in the future, I might consider grinding that pinwheel so the clear glass behind it is round like the design. Over here, the decroque and this little, this little extra piece I added at the last minute, I really like the way those uh, rounded out the edge quality and made it nicer. We've got the twisted cane over here. That looks how beautiful that is. We've got green, then orange, yellow, then purple. We've got a twisted cane here. Look at that nice detail. Got the fire sticks here, right here. That little fun piece almost looks like it's a little um, ancient handwriting or something. And then the Murini right here. Oh, and that dichroic, look, ooh, how pretty that is. This, the dichroic is down. So you see this little edge quality here? That's the dichroic coating wicking up around the glass and giving it a bit of a halo, 
which is cool. The interesting thing about that is it's not always consistent. See how it's not here, but it is here and here. So you, it's an added detail that you um, you can look forward to having, but it's gonna, there's going to be variations to it, which is also cool. And I've got my handy hanger here and here. Nice. And look at the back. Can you see the iridized piece that we added so that I would encase those wire hangers? And that's kind of a nice additional detail there. So I really like the way that came out. So I'm loving this piece. All right, so let's put this one here. And this one came out real pretty. Now look here, that's a little bit washed out because it's on a lighter color than this one right here. So note to self, depending upon how well you want that to show, whether you want to be kind of a subtle shadowy look or a little stronger, it, uh, it would help to make it stronger by putting it on a darker color. All right, now let's take this one out. This one's kind of bailed out a little bit, which is fine, but it's a fun pattern, right? And this piece right here kind of almost rolled right off the edge and out to the other side. Ooh, look at that pretty color there. Even pretty backwards and upside down. All right, so the plan is to take these pieces and string them together and then hang them as a single dangly. I designed these so they'd have a hook at the top, hook at the bottom of the large heart, and a hook at the top and bottom of the medium heart, and then just a hook at the top of the heart of the small heart. So I can put these together. I have these little rings. These are just little metal pieces of metal wire that I bent and made rings. If you're interested in learning how to do that, I have a YouTube video on how to make little rings like this. So I'm not going to take the time here to do that. So I'm just going to take two pairs of pliers. These are called jump rings. I'm not really sure why, but uh, I take two pairs of pliers and open the ring up. Tuck it through here. And then tuck it through this one. I could probably use some needle nose pliers right now. And I'm going to bend it back together. Let me pull out my needle nose. That would be better for this. Here we go. All right, let's see if we can get that in there. This is kind of tricky. We want to make sure that that's nice and tight or closed because otherwise these wires will slip out. There we go. Okay. Now we've got one connected. Now that is not terrific there. Look at that fell right out. All right, well, what we're going to do is for sure get in there a little more closely with these pliers. Oh my gosh, dropping things everywhere here. There we go. All right, so be sure to take your time with this. I'm gonna try these pliers, they're a little wider. Let's see if I can grab that and give it a little squeeze. There we go, okay. All right, um, let's see if it can come out now. Oh yes, it can. All right, we're gonna take a little more time on this. Make sure we get something that works beautifully. But for now, we're just gonna tuck that in there. I'm gonna open this one up. Now these smaller handy hangers are a little bit small, different gauge wire. So we're gonna to have to be even a little more careful with these because they're gonna to want to slip out of this little hole. There we are. Now we're gonna try to squeeze that tight. Goodness. You know, I love the look of jewelry, but this is why I generally don't make it. Because this type of stuff, this little bit of detail here can be a little bit nerve-wracking for me. All right, ooh, that's good. No, it's not. It sprung back apart. See, if I squeeze too much, it'll create a bit of an oval shape. Ooh, see what I mean? Now we got this crazy looking thing here. But you know what? I almost prefer the crazy looking thing because it's not gonna fall off. All right, so there it is. We'll go back and play with that a little bit later, but for now, let's just get this piece finished. So I've got this nice little piece of twine. You could use fishing line, you could use, um, you know, metal. You could use any number of things to um, affix this here. We're gonna just drop, put a little knot here There we go. And I'm 
gonna put a loop at this end. All right, we'll take the scissor, trim off the excess here and here. And uh, there we go. Now, if you put m uh, more pieces here, if you put two pieces, then this heart would hang this direction. Or you could put a little swivel in there and then they would spin. Depends how you want to display it and where you want to display it. But I like the idea of all of them facing the same direction. So I opted just to put one little hook in each one. And uh, there we go, I'm pretty pleased. I'm loving the way this came out, right? This is fun. Fun little thing. Now you could use this inside, you could use it outside, you could um, hang it in a window, hang it from a tree, any number of uses. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed making these hearts with me today. I had a lot of fun working with all the different materials and uh, just seeing what we can come up with. That's always fun. So please consider joining my premium video membership. We would love to have you. I have new videos coming out all the time. And I hope you enjoyed this YouTube channel and this YouTube video. So please follow, subscribe, like, share, all the above. That helps us out and we love to make new content, new videos that you find interesting. So give us your feedback. We'd love to hear that too. Until next time, happy fusing.